<clears throat> Psalms 143, a Psalm of David. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplication. In thy faithfulness answer me. Now, do you really think David doesn't think God listens and hears? When he just said, in thy faithfulness. And we're going about like we did last night. This is a serious prayer of suffering, problems, and troubles. And there gets time, and I have witnessed it, when you're in a prayer life with God, and there are sometimes God does not listen. At least we don't think he's listening. It's not that he doesn't listen, he hears. See, God answers prayer, yes, no, and not now. And it's the not now that we think that God's not listening. And we've got to learn that God is long-suffering and God is patient. I think everybody comes to a time in their life, saved or lost, that they will lose their patience when they're waiting for something of a de desired consequence. When you're in the emergency, emergency room and you're in, in great pain, I've, I've been in enough emergency rooms as a patient and as somebody with a patient. In times of trials and tribulations, we think that God doesn't answer quick enough as much as they're not going to call us into the, into the examination room quick enough. And in thy righteousness. So David says, Lord, hear me, listen to me, but your faithfulness and your righteousness. And if God is right in righteousness, and even hard for me to get, sometimes when God waits and holds off, it's right. But we're thinking it's not right because it's not right now. Enter, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. Lord, I need help. I need. I got problems. I got situation. God, I don't need to be judged. What if the time, the times, the tribulations and trials that we're going through? What is because it is our sin? For thy sight shall no man living. Be justified. David just tells God, listen, <coughs> excuse me, I'm in dire circumstance. If you're to judge me right now, God, nobody's clean. Nobody can be justified. All have sinned. All have come short. We're all guilty. If God were to wipe out on this earth without his mercy and grace and Noah found grace, everybody on the planet would, been, would be wiped out. And the only way we get to heaven is by the justification of the Lord Jesus Christ and the redemption by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not going to heaven because of what I've done. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. Now we got to look at David. And not everybody suffers like David suffered in his entire life. Have you been sought for by the, by the leader of your nation? Here would be King Saul. That the intention of the leader. And the army 
is for you to be dead. Some have. Many have not. And the fact is that that leader and the people who are following that leader that wants you dead is your own family. The common ground would be Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Though King Saul was a Benjamin and King David was a Judah, it's still his family. And that's not all for David's family. He will come to his own sons will despise him and reject him and turn against him. How do you do with your family? David will meet with men like Shimei, will cast stones and, and curse him. Jonathan, his great best friend, will turn his back on him and end up dying with his, with his evil, wicked father in battle. David's got three men of his military. Let's do wrong. Let's kill the king. Come on. Let's... David has a wife that he has to abandon. And in his abandonment, because her father is chasing him to death, she goes off and marries another man. And then gets aggravated with him and gets angry with him. How you doing? And David's a great picture of the Lord Jesus Christ and all that. Listen, when Jesus Christ had everybody against him but John and Mary and few of the women at the cross. His own people wanted him dead. As far as I know, as a street preacher, and maybe it's so, maybe there's people that want me dead. I know they don't want me there. I know they don't want me to show up. I know it's probably in their thoughts and not prayers because they don't, because their prayers don't go go before a God. It goes before the Satan. But I, their wishes and intention would be: I hope he doesn't show up today. I don't know if they plan sometimes to kill me, but they might. I've got own churches and I got brethren in the Lord supposedly call themselves Christians that have stabbed me in the back recently. David has been discouraged by family, by friends, and I mean family, I mean of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his immediate family. He has smitten my life down to the ground. I, I, I've never had that happen. I've had a few instances where I, I should have died and didn't die. I had a near drowning when I was backsliding from the Lord. I had a man pull a forty-five to my, my forehead. I don't know if I was saved then or not. Drunken state with the gun loaded. But I have never had anybody chase me down to where I've fallen upon the ground. I thank God I've only been in one real fight in my entire life. Fist fight. That was back in grade school. I can remember the man, Mike and I going into the nurse's office, getting cleaned up, and the, the principal talking to us, and we became friends again. Don't even remember what it's about. He has made me to dwell in darkness. Now that cave we talked about, how about in the middle of the night where there's no street lights? Maybe no moon. Clouded skies. As those that have been long dead. So you're not just talking darkness. You're talking like, hey, your eyes are closed and you can't see. And you're dead in a, in a tomb in the ground. That's how dark. You can't even see the hand in front of your face. 
David had no light at all. And one of those places was probably that cave. Therefore, is my spirit overwhelmed within me? We read the overwhelming in 142. My heart within me is desolate. God, if I'm really yours, a man after God's own heart, I'm out in the middle of darkness. I can't see. Literally, I can't see. I got the whole nation of people against me. I got friends within, I got friends without. I mean, I've got enemies within, I got enemies without. I've got enemies in my family and out of my family. And I mean immediate family. I got a man who's, who's haunting my soul that wants me dead. My best friend is with that man that wants me dead. And that's the story of the life of Jesus. He went out and slept out in, in, in the mountains in the middle of the night. Some of those nights he spent in prayer. He gets baptized and here he is. Here's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And the Spirit drives him off into the wilderness to be with the devil. I remember the days of old. Meditation and all thy work. I've been thinking about what you've been doing, God. I muse of the work of thy hands. I am counting my blessings, God. And I'm naming them one by one. But right now, God, I need you to listen. I need you to put your ear to me. And we read Psalm 142. I am complaining, God, because this is not correct. I assume Paul had many of those, those events. He says, night and the day I've been out in the deep because of the shipwreck. He's had many times, no street light, traveling, going here today. There was no lights, storms. Perils of this, perils of that, perils of them, perils of those. I starved, dehydrated. My own church people have become my enemies. And if you're going to come up to me as a Christian, but well, things ain't that bad, you are on the side of the world because Paul says, my, uh, they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You're not suffer persecution. David suffered perse persecution. What's the common link? We are soldiers of Jesus Christ. We are soldiers of God. Evidently, you're not soldiering. John writes, marvel not, the world hates you. Jesus said, know that the world hated me first. I'm starting to think now. Recently, these people that unfriend me because things I say and the statements I make and all that. I, I haven't committed adultery. I haven't got intoxicated. I have not wasted my money. But because I take a Bible stand, because I take a conviction of what I believe is holy and right. I wonder where you stand. I know where David stands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. He's lifting up his hands. He can't see his hand. He's lifting up his hands. Lord God, will you fill me? I said, uh, I get, you know, when they're lifting up the hands, I, I've been perverted by the Pentecostals. And when you put your hands out, Lord God, will you fill them? You take my hand. You know, when they say, Jesus, hold your hand, that's a lie.
ever since December 10th of 2019. My hand's been empty. I'm asking God to, to give me somebody to hold it. Well, Jesus will hold your hand. No, he won't. You're speaking because you have a spouse. How about God took your spouse away and see if Jesus will hold your hand? He won't. You don't feel it. David's out there. He's married. He's out in the middle of the woods running for his life. Uh, who's holding his hand? Christians who have not had the battle. They're not fighting. I stretch for my, my soul thirsty after thee. As a thirsty land, Selah. As when it hasn't rained for a long time and it rains. And that land is soaks up that water. God, that's what I feel for you. I want to soak you up. I'm not backslidden. I want somebody with, back in David's time. Well, David, you know, if you just went to the temple, if you did not forsake the assembly of, of, the, of the brethren and been at the temple, you'd be perfect. If David would have went to the temple, that's exactly where Saul would have known the God and, and went and killed David. You know there are churches today, if a Christian goes into them, they will turn them over to the authorities. They will turn them over. They will. I've been rejected by churches for my state and believing and my convictions. Don't tell me. There are, there are countries in this world today, if they went to a church and gathered as a church, the government will go right there and take them out and arrest them. And persecute. You cannot have an open church in China. Go ahead, have a Bible Baptist church of Jesus Christ in the blood in a in a Muslim occupied area and see how far you get. Without converting to Islam and Allah. It's not church. People go to church, go to church, go to church. Not, not if you're not saved, don't go to church. Selah, guess what that stands for? That's the second Advent passage. That's the Jew who is on the run from the enemy, the Antichrist, and God has prepared them a place, and they're desolate. They're alone. Because majority of the nations, the GOAT nations, are not going to dare help that Jew. And many of those GOAT nations will turn that Jew over to the Antichrist. Only few of the sheep nations would help. David pictures a, a servant of the Lord that's being persecuted. And he's also pictures a Jew and, Dan, uh, and uh, Jacob's set, uh, trouble. Out in the middle of nowhere where there's no light. And God, come on, God. Look at what we've all been through. And God's up in heaven. Seventh year. I am not releasing my son to the seventh year. Come on, God. He's first. I said seven years. I told you guys to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't want to listen. I told you my prophets. I sent you my prophets. Lord, come on. We're at the end of seven years, Jesus Christ will come. Have you read the book of Revelation? Have you studied Daniel? Have you studied what Jesus said about the tribulation period? There's coming a time in the tribulation period that men are going to seek death. It's going to be so painful. We want to die and God says, no, you're not going to die. God, you're going to help us? Seventh year. 
Seven years. And I don't even know if they're going to know seven years. David doesn't know. Hear me speedily. Come on, God, hurry up. Will you hurry? That's the problem with God. If he's got a problem. We got a problem with God. God is long-suffering and very patient, and we are not. And don't tell me you're patient and you were survive. Because wait till you need absolute pain care for you or somebody you really love, and it just you gotta wait. There's got to be something in your life that you want, and you want it now, and David says, hear me speedily, O Lord. <laughs> My spirit faileth, I'm dying. If God takes that spirit and does not return that spirit, I'll be dead. What he's saying, God breathed into Adam and Adam became a living soul. David said, my spirit, my breath is going. Hide not thy face from me. He's... All right, God, if you're, not, if you're listening, then you're hiding yourself from me. God doesn't hide. He knows all. And he knows all before it happens. This is a man who's in distress and anguish. He's near death. And some of the lives of seeing creation, that's not the spirit you ought to have, David. Come on, David, give God a hundred dollars and he'll give you a hundred thousand dollars. I guess David doesn't have enough faith. David didn't go to church. David didn't tithe. David didn't do the VBS. No. God's putting David through a trial and tribulations and God will deliver David when God is ready to deliver David. But David doesn't know when and how and where. And we know the deliverance comes for David. But David doesn't have the completed Bible to know his end. Least I be like unto them that go down into the pit, death, and maybe hell. Hell. God, people going to hell don't have your presence no more. And if I go, Lord, your presence is not with me. It's like a man that's going into hell. That's what he's liking it to. Out here in my trials and tribulations, God, you're hiding yourself from me. You're not listening to me. I, I'm just like I'm in hell. Jesus went into hell. Jesus cried out on the cross, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? I'm a child of God. David's a child of God. David's got the sure mercies. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, second advent. And that morning is the second advent when Jesus comes. Lord, I want to hear your loving kindness. God is love. God is love. God is love. But a man who's in trials and tribulations, anguish of the devil, 
and other Christians and the unsaved people. He's not feeling that love. And he's reaching out to God and God's not now. God needs some deliverance. Not now. God loves you. It don't feel like it. For in thee do I trust. No matter what, God, I'm trusting in you. That's the key. God, I don't know why you got me in this. I don't know why I got myself in this. I don't know how or when you're going to get me out of this, but as the Christian goes, Lord, if I die, I'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And if I'm absent from the body, present with the Lord, I guess you're all done with me. And if I wake up tomorrow morning, you have use for me one more day. That's the Christian point of view. But remember, David knows he's been anointed king and he has not been king yet. So that little flare in the back of his head, okay, wait a minute, I'm, I've been anointed by Samuel. Saul is the king. Imagine if he's thinking, God, did you lie to me? No, he did not think that because he says, I trust in you. You know, he's trusting. I have been anointed king. I'm not the king. What on earth is going on? But I'm at the point of death, he says. Cause me to know the way where I should walk. Okay, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm in the condition I am in because I've sinned against God. What way do you want me to walk, Lord? You know what the problem with going to a psychiatrist? He's not going to tell you if you're wrong with God how to get right with God. And if you're lost and a, and a person comes to you with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and an open Bible, he's trying to show you the way that God has set before you where Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. David, we know as a child of God, he's like, maybe I'm the wrong one. What do you want? Where do I go? Which way do you want me to go so I can get out of this mess? For I lift up my soul unto thee. I've got nothing else but you, God. I can't run to the government. The government wants me dead. I can't run to Jonathan. He's with his father. He wants me dead. Can't run to the sons of... Uh, Azuriah, because they want everybody dead. Deliver me. Get me out. The only deliver me Christians know today is to get a pizza. Deliver me doesn't mean, you know, Lord, I want a, a, a pepperoni if that's kosher. No, Lord, bring me a cheese pizza. That's not to deliver me. That's get me out of the situation and get me out now. That's what he's saying. Oh, Lord. Notice he says, oh, Lord. He doesn't call upon the army. You know, deliver me, oh, army. Deliver me, oh, Baal. No. By the way, Baal is Lord, small l, small o, small r, small d. That's what Baal means, Lord. David's got the Lord, Jehovah. For my enemies, from my enemies, deliver me from them that are giving me a hard time. 
Now imagine a Christian getting persecuted by other Christians. And God, God, will you? Well, I'm doing that now. Anybody who's giving me a hard time, Lord God, you take care of it. I flee unto thee to hide me. God, I'm running to you. Hide me. Now, he just said earlier, God, you're hiding yourself from me. David doesn't know what he's saying. He's in anguish. And yet he has trust enough in God that, God, you're going to get me out of this. And when I come to you the right way, you're going to hide me. And do you know the life of David and King Saul? David was hidden by God. One day, one day, I forget where it was. Here's David. And up pops Jonathan. Hey, David, how you doing? Hey, Jonathan. The entire army of King Saul is looking for, for David. And Jonathan comes out and says, how you doing? Saul couldn't find David, but Jonathan was able. Teach me to do thy will. You know why Christians won't ask for that one? Because Christians want to do what their will is, not God's will. And a lot of times, God's will is not what our will is. And the worldly Christian knows that, and that's why he won't ask God. What is the will of God in my life? Read your Bible, study your Bible. Oh, I don't want to do that. What's the will of God in my life? Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Are you doing that? Oh, I've got to find a will for my life. That's go in all the world and, and preach the gospel. How much more do you need? How clear can you get? Pray without ceasing. Rejoice evermore. Weep with those that weep. Rejoice with those. Come on. No, you want God to do something great in your life, something that you can, people can come to you. Look how great I am. No, to him is how great thou art. For thou art my God. There you go. Thy spirit, the Holy Spirit, is good. Man, he's in the times of his trouble, in the times of his problem, he's confessing God and who God is and the Holy Spirit. Where's Jesus? If David's looking forward to the cross of Calvary, how come he didn't say Jesus? You figure if they're looking for the cross of Calvary, they would know that the name would be Jesus. You would find Jesus in the Old Testament, and you don't. There's God, and there's the Holy Spirit. Where's Jesus? Lead me unto the land of uprightness. That's the millennium. That's when Jesus Christ is going to sit on the throne. And David will be the prince and the Levites will serve. And David has orchestrated the, the Levites and the singing and all that. Everything that David set forth, God's going to set forth under Jesus Christ. Quicken me. Make me alive. Oh, Lord. I'm, I'm near death. We've already read that. I'm near death, Lord God. I need you to revive me. If Saul... Gets a hold of me. If Absalom gets a hold of me. I'm dead. That's a very true statement. A lot of Christians. Many Christians in America. Have not come to the persecution. Where we're dead yet. Right now persecution. Where Christians are under the death threat. Are in Muslim nations. Are in Catholic nations. China and communist nations. Those Christians are under the threat of death. Put 
Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. For thy righteous sake. Under your name and under your righteousness, Lord God, help me. Get me out of this. Make me alive. Bring my soul out of trouble. And I've told you before, that's a famous word of David that also pictures Jacob's trouble. You know, sometimes I wonder why it wasn't called David's trouble. Because David went through a lot more trouble than Jacob. But God knows more than I do. And of thy mercy. Look at that. He's pleading to God for mercy. Cut off my enemies. <laughs> Look at that mercy. Look at David. Love thy enemies, David. Lord, mercy. Okay, what do you want for mercy? Kill them. Send them to Cut off in the Bible for a Jew meant you went to hell. When it says in the law, if a Jew does this, he's cut off from his people. That means go to hell. David, and thy mercy, God, cut off my, send them to hell. Boy, they would not enjoy David coming into their church house and delivering a message. As much as they would not enjoy John the Baptist coming into your church house. They wouldn't even appreciate Jesus Christ coming to your church house. And he's not coming to church house because the lad to see in church age, Revelation chapter 3, he's standing outside the, door, the church door knocking. Imagine if Jesus went in the church house today, what he'd be kicking over. Uh-huh. He ain't kicking nothing over. He's just standing outside the door. He's letting the devil in. And destroy all them that afflict my soul. Great lover of the of the of the enemies of love your enemies, David. You know that's what's gonna happen to all the in enemies of of Israel, the, the sheep, I mean the goat nations at the second advent. You know that God said whoever curses Israel, they will get a curse. I'm trying to find out right now this, this recent uh, peace treaty that Donald Trump did with uh, uh, Israel and uh, I don't, that, that nation, whatever, United Arabs. I'm trying to figure out what did Israel have to give up? And if Israel, I don't, I don't understand the writings. But let me tell you, I know one thing. If Israel had to give something up for Donald Trump to get the United Arabs and, and Israel together for that peace treaty, if and I probably Israel had to give something up. If you know, send me the information. I, I want to know. But if, if order for that peace of Israel, and if, if Israel had to give up some land, as usually they do, that's a curse to Israel. And the country that curses will get cursed. That would be America. I'm not saying nothing yet because I don't know what the tax of that peace treaty. But if there was agreement of Israel to lose some of their land, and it has been in the past. Look at what God did to England with the Belfort Declaration for the land of Jordan. Israel can have that land. Oh, wait a minute. We've got to be kind to the Jordanians. And God almost wiped England off the map. I don't, I'm not going to say, because I don't know. But that's what David's saying. Cursed be that curse us. That's the Antichrist. That's the, all the nations that go against Israel in the tribulation period. That's the Antichrist. That's the devil. That's the false prophet. For I am thy servant. 
And that's such a bad word today. Slavery and servants and men, that's such a bad word. Well, guess what? You've taken a whole generation of people of the black color and you've almost perverted them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because if you can't acknowledge your servitude to God, And you erased all... There's coming a new Bible pretty soon. It's going to be the BLM Bible. The Black Lives Movement Bible. And it will remove all the slavery. It will remove all the servitude. It will remove all the lords. It will remove all the masters. It will remove all the words that those people that are involved with the BLM movement that the words they don't like and the feminists that don't like and the sodomites that don't they're going to take they're going to chop the word of god in all kinds of pieces and you're going to ruin the gospel of the lord jesus christ for them that's a sad statement well then again i i look at as far as what do you think the devil the antichrist is going to do with the BOM movement Ridiculous. 